So hi guys, I'm up to week six in my weekly editing series. Today I've picked a photographer from Philippines, Martin San Diego. Let's have a look at his work. So Martin, good to hear from you and uh, see your growth over the past uh, few years since we last met. Does this project explores and visualizes the role of identity amongst, amidst the lingering lure of militancy, militancy among Filipino, Muslim, or Moro youth in Southern Philippines? I'm sharing with you a long-term project that is close to my heart that I can't seem to find a way to edit coherently my general problem in everything I photograph. I'd be honest that I had no idea what I was doing when I started it in 2018. It's my first long-term project and it came at a time when I deeply wanted to know what I stand for as a young photographer, as a storyteller. Yep, thanks for that. I had a good look. So let's have a look at Martin's uh, images. Okay, so I've had a look at uh, Martin's images now. Um, so it looks like it's taken in a very photojournalistic, documentary manner, um, quite traditional. And it looks like he's shot everything with one focal length. It looks like, uh, or two focal lengths. Uh, it looks like it's a cross between 35 and uh, I think a 28 and a 24. So. Uh, I know the tendency of young photographers when they start out doing this type of work is to shoot with those two sort of lenses. Uh, they tend to go very wide and I think um, uh, for majority of the shots and it, it, uh, it clearly shows in this uh, Martin's pictures that uh, that is the case. You know, most of the images are shot, you know, quite wide, um, trying to fill in a lot of information in the screen as possible. Um, um, my, my first uh, desire after going through the uh, images is perhaps I would like to see uh, some uh, more images that uh, perhaps were taken with a 50mm or something narrower, something longer, um, something that uh, is not as busy because if I look at every single frame, you know, there's a, a lot of shots where it's very busy. Martin's trying to squeeze in a lot of information, a lot of context, uh, which is fine. But I think uh, a project uh, should always strive to have some diversity, some rhythm. So you, you should have a mixture of images that are wide, that shows context, shows scapes. But also, you know, sometimes a frame is, um, is okay if it was just looking at one thing and one thing alone. Um, so I think that's kind of what is missing that uh, I would have liked to have seen. So for Martin, if you were to actually continue this project, you know, I, I think you should consider uh, varying your focal length um, and perhaps looking at uh, adding a new way of looking, which is not necessarily, you know, the wide, uh, the wide uh, shots always, um, you know, where you're trying to fill in a lot of information, fill in a lot of frame, fill in a lot of things in the frame. Uh, so that's, that's the first uh, tip I would actually suggest. But I think, like I said, uh, it's a brave effort because I think the subject matter is very complex. Um, and I don't think this type of project can be done overnight. You know, it needs a lot of time, a lot of investment, um, a lot of uh, research. Uh, you know, to really produce something that is uh, worth uh, worthwhile, not only for yourself but also for the the community that you are photographing. So, Martin, I looked through your images to see whether there are captions in the data within the data file, uh, and you have some captions, but not all of them have captions. Actually, quite a lot of them don't have captions. So, I think it's a good idea for a project like this to actually put in captions so at least um, there's some context to what it is we are looking at for, for me or for your audience. Um, 
And I think it's important and good uh, practice as well for you as a photojournalist to work in projects like this to get your information correct and to impart correct information. Uh, there are a few images that have uh, captions which are read, which is good, but I think you need to be a bit more thorough. Um, and most, or if not all your images, particularly in this genre of photography, uh, should have captions. I've done my first round of culling so from your uh, wide uh, edit submission of 101, 101 images, I've actually culled it down to 21. So I've cut out um, 80 images. So if you remember the uh, VSS workshop, the five picture edit exercise that was given to the group uh, and, and you took part in it as well, um, which is this, I have, I have it up here on the screen. Uh, basically picking from your wide uh, edit, picking five images that uh, are functional for the story, that, that serve its purpose in the edit. So the first image is surprise image, second establish, establishing what the story is, then you develop, then you climax, then you conclude. So in the storytelling, writing world, it's almost, uh, you can say that this is a um, uh, slight uh, reference to the three act uh, within storytelling. The three act one, you know, the setup, which is established, uh, you know, and then the uh, climax is the uh, conflict and conclude is the resolution. So it's the same as the three, three act within, you know, storytelling, narrative, uh, writing. So moving forward now from my culling of your uh, wide edit of 101 images to I have here 21 images. Um, the next thing I'm going to do now is actually to demonstrate this and use this uh, five picture edit, uh, surprise, establish, develop, climax, conclude as a means to uh, give you a edit, a guide edit. So let's see. So looking through, I was trying to find a surprise image. Um, you know, I was yearning for a, a lot more variety, perhaps. Um, within what you have, but uh, you know, I had to make do with what you have. So I picked this as a surprise image, which is a young lady. Uh, I think you photographed her uh, in a few frames uh, in the darkness, looking at a screen, um, you know, surprise in the sense that, uh, you know, um, there's a sense of mystery and then, you know, the light and, you know, a, she looking at the light in this world of darkness. So I found this in the, this image uh, to be the most surprising of, of the lot that you have. Uh, I like it aesthetically as well. So that's my first pick for surprise. Then I shortlisted these two images as an established to establish that this 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 story is uh, taking place in in this region in this community within uh, Philippines. So it's this shot. I like this shot where it has the interior. Um, and it looks like it's a school uh, that looks like uh, perhaps a uh, school chair with a sliding desk and that looks like um, you know school textbook and then it shows the exterior as well which is damaged and the windows you know so you know I think this is a good establishing shot to show that you know this is happening in this particular area and then you know it's there's a lot of uh, conflict going on. So it was choice between this shot or this shot, which is a wider shot, and it shows the destruction, the, the buildings and all that being bombed, I, um, I suppose. Um, and then the, uh, you know, barriers on the road. Uh, so this is a very traditional establishing shot, a wide shot uh, that locates where this is happening. Then I go to a developing shot where I introduce 
one of the subjects, and I think uh, for this subject you had a caption. This young gentleman was, um, you had a little story about this, uh, a little write-up about this gentleman who, who wanted to join the, uh, the militant group. And I think that this portrait goes, you know, the way it's shot. It kind of goes with this, you know, um, aesthetically and, you know, the light and the shadow. So I think it's a good fit and it develops the story further. Um, now for our uh, climax or conflict picture, uh, I think this was the best picture I could... Uh, find or, or, or use and I think it's it's a uh, it's a nice picture it's obviously a, a painting haphazardly uh, painted by what looks like a child and you know unlike other sort of uh, paintings by children you know this depicts you know a house and then obviously a war scenario where there's a helicopter you know firing down at people that look like they're running away uh, and on this side you know there's trees and there's further sort of houses depicting community the sun is like bright and there's birds so you know it's it's a this is a nice sort of uh, metaphoric image uh, it shows the perspective of a kid and it shows you know the kid's house perhaps and the community bright sunshine but then it's cut in the middle with this uh, depiction, uh, stick figure depiction of a uh, war-torn community and, um, you know, this flying sort of uh, helicopter shooting down at the people. So I think this is a, a nice uh, conflict climax image. Um, I think the best of your lot uh, that depicts you know, in a bit more sort of literal terms, uh, what the conflict is. And then, this is um, my resolution picture, or concluding conclusion picture. So I said before, when uh, you conclude, you can conclude in many ways. You can show that there's a resolution in the sense that uh, the conflict has been resolved. <clears throat> or you could conclude with a question. So in this sense, my pick for this is that I'm concluding with uh, a question, as in uh, I'm concluding with a picture of a very young uh, girl within this community, uh, and she's, she's in school, uh, you know, and the school looks, uh, doesn't look like it's in good shape. Um, so the question here is, okay, you know, what's, what's uh, it's not, uh, the situation hasn't improved, it's not resolved, you know, what's going to happen to her? Uh, now and in future. So the conclusion is a question mark, not a uh, resolution, okay, all things are good now, let's move on. So it's it's a question mark. And I think I picked this image as well because it, uh, um, it matches the other two portraits, this one and this one. These five pictures tell the story through the eyes of three subjects of, of different sort of profiles. So from that five, once we've got a five picture, we can add in fillers, right, to expand the edit beyond five to 10 or 15 or 12, whatever, whatever the, the final sort of edit will be. So I will start to do that now and try and expand on my five images to see uh, how many more images I can um, put in to sort of have a slightly bigger edit. So I have now 15 images. Uh, so essentially what I did was from that five uh, image, uh, five picture edit uh, with, each, uh, with each picture serving a particular function in, in the story, I expanded that and uh, slotted in images where I felt uh, uh, it could go in various uh, parts of the sequence. So let's have a look. So again, we uh, start with this image, which was my surprise image. Then we, you know, 
keep the uh, establishing uh, image where it is. Uh, this shot of the interior exterior showing destruction and where uh, this uh, conflict is uh, taking place um, within the uh, Philippines. Then we introduce um, one of the subjects, a, a closer portrait. So I think it's um, uh, I think it's a good way to edit as well so that you have like visual rhythm. So it's not like a busy, a busy photo follows a busy photo follows another busy photo. So at least the eyes, you know, um, is tickled each time we actually flip through an image. Then we introduce another subject and I, I put her in because I think I read your caption and she, you know, the caption um, uh, is quite notable. So I think uh, uh, we should put her in. Then of course we have a, we have our climax image that kind of depicts uh, what the conflict is. And I think I read your caption and this, this uh, site is quite important. So I, it uh, develops the story further. Uh, the only thing with this image I felt, uh, I feel um, you can take a much better image. I feel it's a bit too wide. Um, I, I'm not 100% certain of the way you framed it. You know, even perhaps, you know, I would have liked to have seen an option where there is just that. Then I think this is a good detail. I'm not 100% sure because you didn't have a caption for this, but, you know, uh, I'm assuming that this, you know, um, certificate and the medals might be related to her. Uh, so it gives um, an additional development of the character or the subject. And it's a nice, you know, um, change in tone to some of the other images. I put this image in because I, I you didn't have a caption for this, but uh, it might be an interesting detail to have. Like I said, uh, each image should share something new. And uh, I feel that maybe this image uh, with the clear, I'm assuming that that means something that, you know, that this is like a mark for uh, a safety mark or something. I, I'm not 100% sure you didn't have a caption, but that is what I read. Uh, into the image when I saw it and you know the school girl there uh, so uh, I put it in because of the detail it uh, develops a story it adds uh, more information then I um, put this image you didn't have that many images of the uh, military presence um, so I picked uh, the, the one that suited the sequence the, the best and I think uh, this one because of the light and shadow it kind of fits with the other images uh, but like I said uh, I th I'm quite sure based on um, how hard working you are you will definitely you know uh, get better images uh, that is uh, uh, you know that could replace this uh, this is an interesting shot, and I think without context, uh, one might not uh, see what it is, but this bullet hole is another sort of uh, signifier of the conflict. Um, and I like the fact that, you know, like again, like I said, it gives some visual sort of a rhythm to the sequence so that not everything's like uh, busy. You know, sometimes I just want to look at one thing and, and derive some sort of sense from just looking at that one thing. So here, you know, you jump to this, so it gives also gives my eye a bit of a breather. Then, you know, uh, moving forward to more portraits, because I think essentially with a story like this, uh, it's as much as it is about the big picture, it's, it's, it still boils down to the people, the subject, and, and how conflicts af affect uh, people and their lives. Um, and I th the, I'm putting this in as well to show that, um, you know, uh, this is slightly different because you know you're looking at her alone and you know it's it's the shot is a bit cleaner uh, so you know it, it gives some visual variance uh, this could be another uh, another uh, subject that you spend time with or I'm assuming I, I'm not quite sure whether it's the same um, it's the same uh, lady but uh, it could be that you know you you spend time with a you pick like a handful of subjects and you spend time and follow their lives 
you know, over a long period of time so that you see, because uh, you're talking about the youth, right? So youth is a time of transition. So you want, uh, you want to be there, um, you know, to tell the story of that transition from uh, a particular age, you know, transitioning to adults. Then we go to this. I think this uh, this one had a caption, and I th believe uh, he's one of the um, young social workers working working in the community amidst the the conflict. So it's a good uh, detail to have. Perhaps he is another subject that you sort of follow. So it's um, the way to develop the stories, but to, perhaps to you know pick um, pick a, a handful of subjects of different backgrounds of. And, and what they are doing, uh, or different roles within the community, and then follow them, you know, over an extended period of, t period of time. Of course, you need consent and you need their participation as well uh, to follow their lives and to tell their story. And I think this is a good shot. I'm not, uh, I don't think you had a caption for this, but it does, you know, show the youth and, um, you know, I like the, what, I'm reading into the image. I'm not 100% sure of that, but you know, I'm putting it in there so to give you a sort of guide. I like this um, shot as well. Uh, of seeing out through the window, it carries on from some of the earlier shots, uh, showing this, the destruction and and I think the uh, dire situation that this community is 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 in. And then we end with our selection for the conclusion, which is a question mark, you know, what is going to happen. So that's it for uh, week six of my weekly editing series. Uh, I'll be picking a new book to edit next week, which takes us into week seven. Uh, the submissions are still open, so do consider submitting your work if you'd like to be considered uh, uh, for editing by myself. Uh, thank you and take care and see you guys uh, again.